Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you, wherever you are in this part of the globe. And as you know, this is the course under the SWAM lecture series and the title is Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management. And my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at the IIT Kanpur in India. So this is the fourth lecture under this SWAM lecture series. So this is the uh, main title of the of the series uh, of the classes investor analysis and portfolio management now if you remember in the in the third lecture we we had a brief discussion about the background background in the sense that what we mean in very simplistic sense uh, about the assets what are the investment assets the differentiation between consumption and investment assets and uh, what is the rate of return uh, or the different concepts of returns which is small r or capital R and how it can be calculated. I showed that with a small diagram. Then the idea was discussion was that we use the expected value and the variance as a positive or a, or a negative concept to analyze your decision of investment. Then uh, we, uh, we told about the concepts that the T bills the long term bond, short term bonds, how uh, matching should be done with respect to the interest rate and the time when the money is needed. And uh, we did mention two other topics which we could not cover in the one hour in the third lecture. So, we will try to cover that one is basically the short selling and the investment decision point. So, in fourth lecture today, the title is continuation of whatever uh, we had planned to finish in the third lecture is introduction and investment analysis it is a continuation of the third lecture. Now lecture description which is important because based on how we go into the depth we will try to cover definitely if there are some small spillovers we will take that uh, into consideration and, and continue it in the next class. So obviously there would be more concepts in between but uh, these are the important bullet points we should definitely um, keep in mind when we are discussing. So, we will consider about the concept of short selling, what we mean by short selling and how both qualitatively and quantitatively how does it affect the overall analysis. Qualitatively we will discuss and then come back in details in the quantitative sense how the problem solving can be done and the problem solving is basically from the point of view of the optimization which uh, I will be mentioning in in decent details later on. We will consider the step by step of the investment decision, what, what, how you consider and, and the overall decision process and obviously there are different uh, methodologies how you do that, but the overall idea will be discussed. We will consider that what is diversification and how diversification is really the backbone based on which the concept of portfolio management uh, really came into being. We will consider the simplistic sense of two assets being combined, how diversification helps and more so that how we can basically delineate or draw the risk return framework diagram. Because if you remember in the last class, the last slide, I had shown you the risk return framework in the Cartesian coordinate where the risk uh, which was variance, it can be any other risk also, but for for the time being we will only concentrate on the variance of standard deviation. This is measured along and, and denoted along the x axis and, and along the y axis we have the returns is basically the average returns. I should not word use the word returns, average returns or the mean value and the points which were shown in pink box sort of thing, they are the points which are basically the assets. So, each asset had a particular return and, and risk. 
So, we will utilize that concept for the two assets and then draw how the combination of these two assets which is now a portfolio looks like as the correlation coefficient changes between the, the two assets and that will give us a good idea that how the idea the overall optimization problem can be handled and how it can be looked into. Then after this two asset problem is analyzed, we come we will go back to, to the risk return diagram for the two assets. Then slowly we will expand our portfolio considering the three assets. Now with the background of the two assets problem, we will discuss uh, the idea that how the three assets can be combined and how would that combination of the portfolio look like. And after having said that, we will jump to the area of where there are n assets and n of them are risky. So, let me make a point of that, they are all risky assets. Why am I mentioning the word risky? You will understand that when later on we combine the risk free interest rate also. <laughs> We will consider and see how the feasibility set and the feasibility region looks like, what is the risk aversion concepts, what is the concept of non cessation, the more I give more you want and how it can be analyzed and that, has, that will give us a good idea how the, the overall feasible set and the feasible region can be divided. Later on then after utilizing the concept of non cessation, we will we'll analyze how the minimum variance set looks like and why it is called the minimum variance set. Based on that, we will consider the efficient frontier where everybody or all the investors would like to go and finally, in for this lecture, um, we will we'll close at least this lecture, we will close with the minimum variance point. So, if we are, we are not able to discuss few things, it will go into the next class, but we will try to follow a logic such that the highlighted points are covered in all the details and all nuances with obviously other concept being covered in between. Now what is short selling? Sometimes it is possible to sell an asset that you do not owe through the process of short selling or shorting the asset. That means I do not have it, I want to sell it. So how do you do that? To do that you borrow the asset from someone who actually owns it, you then sell the borrowed asset to someone else for an amount x naught. Now at a later date, because that asset does not belong to you, at a later date in the future, you repay by purchasing the asset at a say, say an amount x1, because the prices are changing. So obviously you have got it at x0 or sold it at x0 depending on whether you are going to buy and sell. And the next amount when you will be basically sell and buy, um, so you have basically sell it at x0, you will basically buy it at x1 and the return of the asset to the and return the asset to the lender from whom you have borrowed. So, if x1 is less than x0, then you will make a profit of x0 minus x1 and if it is not, you basically make a loss, else you make a loss of an amount x1 minus x0. The short selling is considered risky, so that means I am trying to combine and formulate in my portfolio a particular financial asset which I want that to be in the portfolio, but I do not have it, I just borrow it and combine it in my portfolio, get the benefits and then again return the particular asset to the original person and in the process give him or her back the amount due or any amount of interest rate positive which has come or the dividends which has come for that particular financial asset which actually belongs to that person from whom I borrowed. So, let me continue reading it, else you make a loss of x0, x1 minus x0. So, short selling is considered risky and even prohibited and discouraged within certain financial institution as the loss can be unlimited. If the price fluctuation is huge, then obviously I will face a loss if I am going for the short selling and that may would be detrimental because if I am not able to pay back that or give back that particular financial instrument to the person from whom I have uh, borrowed or, or, bo or borrowed, then in that case it will be a huge amount of loss for that particular person. If x1 increases arbitrarily, this is what, what, what I mentioned, in certain situation SS is allowed and the mechanism being that if it is allowed, there is some sort of caution. So that caution being, so the caution being there is a deposit or security deposit or a, or a collateral about, about which we will discuss afterwards. So, remember if the stock 
which you have taken on a loan for short selling pays dividend. This is the point which I was, uh, uh, was mentioning. If it pays dividend during the period that you have borrowed, then you must pay the same dividends to the person from whom you have borrowed because the actual dividends actually belongs to that person. So, obviously, you do not uh, own those dividends. You, you have no right. You just have borrowed it in order to utilize it for your uh, portfolio management. Now, the implication of going for a short selling in the mathematical sense would be very interesting because if you remember, we have been discussing about the weights, that weight concept will again come up in the short selling sense, but in a very interesting way. Let us now determine the return associated with short selling. So, if you receive x, x naught, and the x naught means the time t being 0 at r, which is in the suffix initially and pay x1 later. So, in that case, capital R obviously will be x1 minus x0 and in the case when you are considering the small r, small r we know would be basically x1 minus x0 that numerator divided by x0. Generally, the returns of an asset is random. Obviously, we know the prices of fluctuation, it would be random. In the sense, we do not know what would be the amount of money we should pay or receive for buying or selling that asset. Hence, rather than working with the random variable, we are more interested in finding out the expected value which will give us some in a huge amount of information how the overall asset is performing. This is the notion which we will apply for calculating the portfolio return because once we have different type of financial asset, we will combine them to find a portfolio. And the end result, if you remember, was basically to find out the weights. And why we are interested in finding out the rates rather than, rather than the number of assets, you remember I did mention that as W1 would be continuous, it is easy for us to solve the simple linear programming problem. But for N, which is the number of stocks which is being bought and sold, for the, for the case when we are only interested in, in trying to find out the return and have one of the constraints or many of the constraints based on the number of stocks bought and sold, then it will be an integer programming and it would definitely we have solution techniques for that, but it will be easier for us to basically tackle this problem from the point of view of simple linear optimization, this linear programming concept. So, this is the notion which we will apply for calculating the portfolio return, whereby a portfolio we will always denote a conglomeration of n number of, of assets. So, this n which we are using here, generally it should be denoted by capital N in case we are trying to basically give the symbol of small n to the number of assets which are being sold and bought. So, denote a conglomeration of capital N number of assets, each of which has a certain random returns. So, now we will come into the actual the stepwise concept of how the decisions of the investment analysis are done. So, the main steps for the decision analysis are we consider you set up an investment policy depending on the background of the person who is going to invest, depending on the risk return profile, depending on the amount of money the person has and the number of stocks which are available, what type of stocks he or she is interested and where the growth is in which sector the person wants to invest. So, all these things will come. Then you will basically perform a security analysis. So, you will basically have information about the financial assets, their prices, their average values and all these things should be known to you. And having said, and obviously correlation coefficient should also be known to you. Having said that, you will basically formulate and construct the portfolio. So, the portfolio construction would be from different point of view. Maybe it is a total amount, amount of value of money which you have. It may be the, the minimum uh, variance you want to uh, achieve um, uh, in your portfolio or it can be basically maximum return you can achieve in your portfolio or it can be combination of them. It can also be say for example, one of the constraints can be not, I am not talking about the objective uh, uh, value. One of the constraints can be that you cannot invest more than say for example, um, uh, 90 percent in one of the stocks or you say for, or say for example, you cannot invest less than uh, 10 percent also. So, in that case, the weights of that particular stock which you are, where you are investing would be between 10 percent and 90 percent. We will come to that later on. 
So once you construct a portfolio, you want to basically evaluate it, how it is doing with respect to the market. And what is the market? I'm going to come to that. And how, how do you basically analyze your portfolio, analyze your decision based on what you want your portfolio returns to be, what you want your portfolio risk to be, what you want your portfolio returns risk to be. So there are different questions you will try to answer. Once you are certain that you have been able to satisfy based on what your criteria is and if they are not satisfied, you will basically revise the portfolio, revise the portfolio in the sense basically check whether the weights and each and every financial asset are right, whether you want to basically check how the risk and return profile for individual asset is doing and then basically invest different quantums of, of stocks, buy some stocks, sell some stocks, sell the old one, buy the new one or basically maintain the same number of stocks for many of the other particular financial instrument and be, then basically revise the portfolio. Once you have uh, revised your portfolio, you again find out, uh, out of the weights. So weights are the numbers what I am saying and evaluate the performance of the portfolio based on your new metric, new criteria which you have set for yourself. So having said that, I have already mentioned these five points in, in, in decent um, uh, details that in, in a very from the from the general point of view then I will come to the uh, points in each and every cell subsequently. So you will set an investment policy so it, that will involve determining the investor's objectives and the amount of money he or she has for him or her to invest. So I said that money was important, risk concept was important, return concept was important. So there were many different um, the criteria based on which or constraints based on which the person will invest. So the next step would be perform secret analysis. In this step or process, one examines, examines several individual securities so that we know the fundamental characteristics of the assets. Under this, we have two important concepts. So when I said I, uh, um, uh, you will perform the secret analysis, so obviously uh, the underlying fact is that you will perform uh, technical analysis and, and uh, fundamental analysis and in order to find out that what would be the overall prices or what would be the overall returns of that particular assets because that will give you a lot of information based on the fact that whether you are doing your uh, study <coughs> of the returns of the portfolio or the variance of the portfolio right. That means and it should be as close as possible to reality. So what is technical analysis, what is fundamental analysis, I will come to that later on. Once you, you, you have done the technical analysis and the fundamental analysis, you will construct a portfolio. So this step involves identifying those specific assets to invest. So obviously you will do the technical and, and um, this fundamental analysis for each and every stock and after that you de will decide the, those specific assets in which you want to invest and the amount or the proportion of, of the wealth you want to add, uh, invest in each of these assets. So under this important concept, we have specifically the ideas of diversification, why you want to diversify, what advantage does diversification have. You want to basically also consider the concept of selectivity, so whether you want to <coughs> consider Selecting the st uh, stocks where the variances are very high or the variances are very low, returns are very high, returns are very low or are they in the same sector. So you will basically make a decision accordingly. What is the timing? So you want to basically wait, be, be on, on the lookout when the prices are fluctuating and falling down, then you should buy or when you, or should you wait for the case when the prices are increasing, then you should sell. So all these informations you will basically gather in, in and, and your experience also and uh, uh, based on that you will basically make a de decision to construct a portfolio. Once the construction of the portfolio is done, the, you will basically revise the portfolio. This means periodic view, review of the portfolio and trying to find out how the portfolio is for performing vis vis with respect to the goal we have set for yourself which is very important. So I have set a very high goal which is theoretically uh, possible but practically not possible. So in that case, I should basically revise, revise how the portfolio investment can be done. So this I am saying from the point of view that you have set your goals. It may be possible that you have set your goals right, but your practical sense the overall portfolio is not performing as you should expect. So in that case, your main concern would be in the practical sense how you should basically think of trying to reinvest in different type of assets and make a replan of the investment process in order to achieve the goal which you have had uh, made for yourself.
Once uh, the revision is done, you re evaluate the performance of, of the portfolio. So under this step, you, you basically periodically try to find out how our portfolio is performing and, and, and have proper benchmarks for evaluating it. So ben benchmark can be whether it is able to beat the market, whether it is actually equal to the market or if it is less than the market, what is the total quantum of the difference between the evaluation and the performance of the portfolio and the market. So all these things would be taken care by you on a on a timely basis, on a regular basis. Now it is important to note, so we will only discuss here the portfolio theory as applied to managing financial assets and according to Markowitz th theory, we know that riskiness can be characterized by the concept of variance only. Markowitz means the person who got the Nobel Prize for his work in, in, in the concept of risk return framework and the, and the um, idea how that how it can be utilized. So according to the Marquis theory, we know that risk, is riskiness can be characterized by the variance while the returns are characterized by the expected value utilizing these two important concepts which is the expected value which is the first moment and the variance which is the second moment. We can formulate the general form of the optimization problem. About this we will come back later. So, So variance will give us the idea of riskiness and uh, this concept uh, while the returns, so let me use a different color, it is easy. So returns are characterized by expected value. So when I have the riskiness or the variance, I will basically try to utilize sigma square which will give me the idea of the riskiness or you will try to use the concept of standard deviation and in the case when the, so it be, it's basically the variance and when, when we have the concept of the expected value, so this EX will be the expected value which we know it would be either equal to summation of x. If it is a discrete case, you will have basically x into f of x and in the case x into f x dx. So about this we will discuss later on. It will be worthwhile and, and quite useful to mention here that the mean variance analysis forms the basis of the capital asset pricing model. When making an investment, the initial outlay of capital is known. So we, there would be some repetition in this slides, but please bear with me. When making an investment, the initial outlay of capital is known, but the amount to be returned is uncertain. Because what if I invest in the stock 100 rupees, what would my return depending on the fluctuation in the, uh, in, in the stock market, I do not know. When making an investment, the initial outlay of capital is known, but the amount to be returned is uncertain. Moreover, this investment is considered for the case of single investment period, that is the amount of money which is considered to be known is invested at the initial time frame say t is equal to 0. So you will only consider one time frame t is equal to 0, t is equal to 1. And the payoff which may be random is attained at the period of time t is equal to capital T. Examples of single period investment. So an investment can be of 0 coupon bond, so that means it is not paying us any coupon in between. So, so we will come, come consider a time frame of capital T and make t as small as possible if, if possible such that our analysis would be good and we will try to analyze it. Or you'll, else we will consider an investment in a, in a physical project that will not provide any income until it is completed. So in between payments are not to be considered. We already know here an asset is an instrument or a financial investment that can be brought and sold frequently. Examples being, it can be shares, it can be bonds, it can be land, it can be gold, it can be cash, anything. Suppose that a person purchases an asset at time t is equal to 0 and t is equal to capital T is the period time till what he or she 
wants to hold that particular asset and at that particular time they sell that asset. So, here based on that fact that you buy and sell, there would be two concepts of returns. One is total return which you are already considered plus but we will again um, be utilizing it time and again. So, I thought I will mention it again in the fourth lecture. One is the total return R and one is basically the return based on the, the formula for small r. So, total return where A r is basically the amount received, E i is the amount investment, investment done. So, the difference in the numerator is E r minus A, A i which is the amount received minus the amount invested and that you divide by A i which is the amount invested which is basically a type of efficiency. I find out the difference and divide it by the initial value of investment which has been done. And remember this, this uh, value of R we are using, we are, we are not putting any subscripts here. So, in the case that we consider that this amount invested would happen at time t is equal to 0 and amount received would be at the time t is equal to capital T. Where 0 to t is small as possible. So, if we denote a i at x naught, a r as x i, then the value of capital R is given by 1 plus r, small r and this small r is basically the, the concept which we will consider immediately within few seconds. Such that we will, we can immediately find out that if the increase is happening as r, r values and considering it is, we are not considering continuous compounding interest rate. So, in that case x 1 based on this formula would be 1 plus small r multiplied by x naught. Now, both the total return and the rate of return of a portfolio are equal to the weighted sum of the corresponding individual total return and the rate of return respectively for individual assets. So, we have already seen that. So, if I want to basically highlight it again, so the rate of return on the portfolio, now mark this, what, what is important is that if R i is a random variable, not R bar, I am not talking for the time being of R bar, I am talking only for R and here we are considering the formula to be true for the case when both capital R and small r is used. So, we, if I mention R, it will be interchangeable to what I mean but the slides have a continuity such that you can understand in that perspective what is the concept of R I am utilizing or, or saying. So, return of the portfolio is given by the summation of W i into R i while the value of small r is also given by the same formula, but here R capital R is being replaced by the small r. So, that is weighted weight multiplied by the return R i and you sum them up from i is equal to 1 to n. This value of n I am not going to write, this value of n is basically the number of financial instruments which I have. Now, as mentioned in the last slide which was the 15th, that working with the random variable values may not be very easy. So, what we do or it may not give a good picture. So, what we do is that basically convert the overall random values or the realized value by taking the average of the return. So, this is what the second formula set of formulas which is there denotes. So, if I consider the first one, so R p we take the expected value is equal to summation w i into r i and I take the expected value. So, when I take the expected value, this becomes r p bar and the, the value of, of the term on the right basically becomes we take the expected value for each and term. So, the summation remains w i remains then expected value of r i actually becomes r bar, r bar i. So, if I use the same concept, so this was utilized for the case of ERP when I have basically 
small rp again i use the same formula so this is actually wi into ri ri bar so how do i get it you take in the similar fashion the rp is the random when ri's are random so r is basically small r and when i take the expected value so the left hand term rp becomes rp bar the summation depends at is as it is and wi's are the weights so once we calculate the average return it becomes basically r bar i now for the portfolio with n number of asset each has a certain random returns and let it let us denote it by i is equal to 1 so number of assets are there so they are denoted from 1 to n and let us denote their returns being given by capital ri so also we suppose that one of the total one suppose that out of the total money we have be it our own or borrowed we invest that total amount of money in the proportions now i have mentioned that in the last class in the proportions of wi in asset one i which means w1 in asset 1 w2 in asset 2 and so on and so forth now the value of the investment which we are doing so we have considered now this is the simplistic sense why diversification would become important for us and how we can understand let us consider the weights of each and every asset are e equal so let them be 1 by n that means each of them of the assets gives the return the the return in such a way the investment which is being done in the assets are of 1 by n that means equal proportions that is one of the important assumptions we are we are considering for the time being to basically give us the idea of diversification so in that case if i have 1 by n so it is basically added up n number of times the weight becomes 1 as it should be so this me means that we have to invest in in our case which we have if wi is 1 it means that we have to invest all of the amount money which we have in some combinations of the assets also remember if the weights are between 0 and 1 there it is true in that case that there is no short selling in case if it is not wi is not between 0 and 1 so obviously it will give us an idea that short selling is allowed that means short selling which means i which i borrowed on particular financial instrument and and utilize that to formulate my portfolio to increase increase my returns and also so called decrease my risk if there is short selling wi's can be negative also remember that wi's are, are also called the weights in the respective assets so if i consider the uh, the number of assets which are there for each and every uh, financial instrument then we we know we have seen it that it will be n1 is the number of asset which are bought for the first uh, portfolio multiplied by s price capital uh, small n suffix capital n multiplied by the price would give me the whole portfolio value so once we so this is the total amount now if i divide it by summation of n i s i so each and every term here now becomes w i so the first one is w1 second one is w2 and so on and so forth and the portfolio value because it is divided by summation of the total net amount obviously this value would become 1 as it should be that means if i see the left hand side it has the weights they add up to 1 for the portfolio the total return which is also random is given so we 
have considered that. So, the returns are given by R p is equal to summation of W i into R i, R i, R is capital R or small r is not very important for us now, but we are interested only in the mean value as I have already mentioned. So, the expected value R bar p becomes summation of W i into R i and the variance of the portfolio now becomes based on the actual formula. We have variance is equal to sigma square which will give us the final out output as the variance of the portfolio as w1 into w2 into sigma 1 square which is will be the element in the 1 comma 1 element and you will basically delete and find out all the principal diagonal element values which will be the corresponding variances for each and every stock. And if I want to find out the corresponding of the diagonal element they would be corresponding values of covariance of i to j th one. So, if when we ex expand that uh, calculation, calculation in the sense when we basically expand that double summation w i w j sigma i j which is w i is the weight w 2 is basically the weight for the second one and we also have sigma i j which is basically the covariance of the i th and the j stock. So, these are just repeat repetition once we basically break that covariances. So, it will have three terms one is the correlation coefficient one is the standard deviation of stock 1 or i and, and standard deviation stock j which is 2. The correlation coefficient rho i j between the i th and the j stock can be positive, negative and 0. Hence, we group assets forming the portfolio in such a way that the correlation coefficient between the assets can be utilized to reduce the overall risk of the portfolio. So, I am trying to basically combine the financial assets depending on the total amount of weights which I want to because weights would basically also give us the information that what is the total value of the portfolio R p bar. So, hence we group assets forming the portfolio in such a way that the correlation coefficient between the assets can be utilized to reduce the overall risk of the portfolio and this process would be known as the concept of diversification. So, let us consider an example. Suppose there are two assets R 1 bar is 0 0.12, R 2 bar is 0 0.15 and sigma 1 is 0 0.2, sigma 2 is 0 0.18, sigma means the standard deviation. And here we consider the correlation coefficient rho 1 2 as 0 0.01. So, once we formulate a portfolio with the corresponding weights of w 1 as 0 0.75, uh, w 1 as 0 0.25 sorry, w 1 as 0 0.25 and w 2 as 0 0.75. So, in that case these are the arbit values uh, let, let me clarify that. Uh, because I have not yet started the optimization problem. So, w 1 is 0 0.25 and w is 0 0.75 and we want to find out the return of the portfolio which is given by 0 0.25 into 0 0.12 from where is 0 0.12 coming? 0 0.12 coming is from the return of the first portfolio from where is 0 0.15 is coming which is being post multi uh, pre multiplied by 0 0.75 which is the return of the average return of the second asset and once we find out this value would give the value wait let me write use a different color this will give me R p bar. Now, we will consider the variance. Now, if I write down the formula for the two asset only. So, the two asset one I will use a color which is green say for example, sigma p square is equal to we know the formula double summation w i w j sigma i j. So, let me break the terms. So, i is equal to 1 and 2, j is equal to 1 and 2. So, as I am marking I will write in different colors and mark on a on a on the on a matrix on the top left corner. So, it is of two two cross two size. So, let the matrix border be black and 
the first value is for we will keep i fixed and keep j changing. So, let us use color black or oh, dark red w 1 w 1 1 because j is 1 now sigma 1 1 this is the first term. So, where does it go? This goes in the first set which is w 1 w 1 sigma 1 1 I will expand that later on. So, now w is 1 and j is 2. w 1 w 2 sigma 1 2. So, this is basically the first row and the second column. this one. Then the third term let us use or uh, the orange one. Now, w is 1 is 2 w 2 w 1 sigma 2 1 which is second row first. So, this is 2 And finally, let us use the color green w 2 w 2 sigma 2 2. So, if I have which we all know and and no need of highlighting too much, but I will just mark it. So, this is the principal diagonal. So, so, the elements which you have 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2 are basically the variance multiplied by the square of the corresponding weights. So, what is that? So, the first element is w 1 square sigma 1 square because sigma 1 1 basically means rho 1 1 into into uh, standard deviation into standard deviation so which is uh, rho 1 1 and sigma 1 sigma 1 basically becomes because sigma rho 1 1 is uh, 1 hence sigma 1 into sigma 1 becomes sigma 1 square so you have w 1 square into sigma 1 square similarly i'll come to the other in the principal diagonal this value I will write it here, it becomes w 2 square sigma 2 square. So, it is it is very simple and the element here, this becomes w 1 w 2 rho 1 2 sigma 1 sigma 2 and similarly the orange one you can write it and they would be same value that is why the term 2 comes. So, if I multiply uh, find it out there will be a 2 term. So, that will be for the of the diagonal element. So, once we find out the value. So, let me erase it I have written many things here. So, once we, we have this we uh, calculations we find out R p bar and we have sigma square p also based on the weights correlation coefficient and the standard deviation. Now, let us make it a little bit more simple for ease of understanding the concept of diversification is very important to understand. So, how do we make it a little bit more 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 easy for us to understand. So, let us consider a very hypothetical example a very simple example where we have similarly n number of assets and let us denote them from 1 to n. So, whether so I would be utilizing the word n uh, repeatedly. So, whether it is capital N or small n that would be context specific. So, but initially a maximum of the discussions uh, discussions would be small n. The first assumption 
the prices of the assets are moving in such a way that their respective prices are almost uncorrelated or the correlation is very low or almost zero which means uh, the first one I will use the green. So, here it will be rho i j is equal to 0. So, I am using a highlighter it is quite bold, but I am sure you can understand it is not getting smudged. The so, the next bullet point which means if rho i j is 0 technically it means all the off the diagonal element now vanish. So, only the principal diagonal is there. So, if there are n number of elements, so the total n number of assets, so the total size of the matrix would be n cross n, so they would be n square and if I consider only the principal diagonal uh, to be there which are the only the variances for the first to the, for the nth one then the number of elements which vanish would be so n square is the total minus the principal diagonal so the values across in the of the diagonal element are n into n minus 1 second bullet point Yes, I can use the highlighter. The second bullet point or the point 2, the return for each asset has an average value or mean value of m that means all of them <coughs> which means mu i for all i will be equal to m. That means the value of r i bar is equal to m or if we are using capital R it will be capital R bar I all R M that means they are fixed that is the second. Third one is the variance or risk for each asset is fixed which means I am considering sigma square I is equal to sigma square that means all of them have the same variance. Finally, fourth one weights of each assets the considered in the portfolio is assumed to be of equal proportion which means w i all of them are 1 by n that is equal with which means obviously I have already shown if I add up these 1 by n, n number of times it should be 1 and which is true. So, with this 4 let us now go back into the calculations again. <coughs> what were the calculations? So, let me switch on to the black color so it will be easy. Let me use the pen because I have to scribble and write many things. Okay. So, here if you see the formula it was actually summation w i I am using capital R r i. So, it should be bar bar here. So, there each of them is r 1 by n 1 by n is a constant so, it becomes 1 by n summation of r i bar. So, how many r i bars are there? n each of them are basically given by m. So, this would be 1 by n multiplied by m being added n number of times. So, that becomes m only because n n cancels. So, this take care of the first part. So, which is not going to be utilized here because diversification would not immediately 
uh, be uh, relevant for our discussion from the point of view of, of uh, returns. I am only concentrating on the standard deviation. So, next point standard deviation or the variance sigma square p is equal to the double summation of w i w j sigma i j all the off diagonal males have vanished. So, I would have only these terms summation w 1 into w 1 into sigma 1 square then w 2 into w 2 into sigma 2 square dot dot till the nth term. So, this would be w or let me write it w 1 square sigma 1 square i square because I am summing up. So, why this is? So, that can be broken down into two parts. One is for the case when i is not equal to j and one is the case when i is equal to j. i not equal to j, I am not writing it because there is less space here. That term obviously would be 0 because correlation coefficient is not there and this term does not vanish. So, I am basically bringing this here and for the discussion in the next line. So, when I write double summation of w i square into sigma i square because rho 1 1 or rho 1 2 sorry rho 2 2 or rho 3 3 are all are 1 w 1 is n. So, this is equal to 1 by n square and you have we considered the variances for each and every financial asset was same. So, summation of sigma square. So, how many such sigma square we add? It is n in number in the denominator we have n square, this is sigma square added up n number of times, this value becomes sigma square by n. Now, this is the interesting part. In the process, hope I have not been able to hide the graph hopefully. So, along the x axis, I mark the number of stocks n here and along the y axis, I mark the variance. Now, take n as 1, 2, 3, 4 whatever it is and, and with all the assumptions fixed as in the last slide which was the 20 second. So, as n in increases in the asymptotic sense this value can be made 0. So, this is what the graph is showing why these are, are um, uh, histograms because n we will consider as integers only they are not continuous. So, if I am able to draw the graph, so this will be going considering it is now it becomes I am considering for the continuous case just for our discussion only it becomes basically goes asymptotically to 0 as n increases which means that diversification in the simplistic sense can with some assumptions can really have a far reaching effect in the overall portfolio value of the risk. Thus, if we consider diversification portfolios with only a few assets may be subject to a high degree of risk represented by a relatively high variance. So, the variance of the return of the portfolio can be reduced by including additional assets in the portfolio. That is the main idea. Now, let us consider a second example a little bit change in the assumptions. Consider other example, but now with correlated assets. So, all the other assumptions remain same apart from the correlated assets. The return and variance of the, of the return and variance of the assets are as in the above example with mean of m which I am highlighting now, variance of sigma square which is also I am highlighting. So, these are same as before, but now with each pair of asset they have a covariance which is given correlated and 
that value is given by 0 0.3 constant. So, obviously, standard so the mean value. So, let us even though it is very obvious to all of you, the return will be equal to summation w i into m w i is 1 by n you sum up m n times. So, that becomes m which is done the first part. Now, come back to the variance sigma square is equal to double summation into w i w j sigma i sigma j that is broken into two parts double summation where i is not equal to j which now would be non-zero because there is a correlation and this part where i is equal to j remains as it is. So, let us go part by part. So, in the in the first part which is i is not equal to j it is twice because they are mirror image along to the with respect to the principal diagonal. So, we will have twice into w i let us remove the 2 now for the time being we will come back to that later w i w j this is 0 0.3 3, this is the correlation coefficient which we have assumed for this problem. So, I will mark it in red, this is basically rho which is constant. So, this is sigma i sigma j, now sigma i sigma j are the standard deviations. So, they are fixed, so this value becomes 0 0.3 double summation of w i w j are again the same which is n square sigma i sigma j is sigma square. So, you have 1 by n square values of sigma square into 0 0.3. And how many times would you have? So, we know it will be n into n minus 1 and this term we already know because so this part this part green is basically here. and this part blue which which I should complete and then write it down I will just highlight it to it. So, this is double summation w i into w i both are same one time it will be done principal diagonal rho values are 1 and you have sigma i square. So, it becomes 1 by n because w i is n. So, it goes out right squares I sum up n number of times it becomes sigma square by n is exactly the same thing which I had there. So, this is this part. So, here what I can do becomes n. So, you have calculated. So, I am basically adding up these three terms. So, so it becomes let me take this here. So, it is sigma square there is n there 0 0.3 the first term has an n. So, let me write down second term which is the the part which is shown in green I am only writing that plus minus sigma square into 0 0.3 by n and this part which is from the blue is become sigma square by n. So, 
in the first terms sigma n n cancel so this is what so now let me highlight it so for ease of understanding so this sigma square 0.3 is here so this is taken care of with a different color blue this these two terms this is sigma square by n is common you have plus 1 minus 0.3 so that becomes plus 0.7 sigma square by n n so this is taken care of so all the terms taken care of now what happens to asymptotically to these values so so let me use the red part this value can be made 0 as n increases and this value cannot be made 0. So, if I draw the graph I am using the red color they would be asymptotic line here of value 0.3 sigma square and the variance would be like this where we measure n we measure sigma or the sigma square p of the portfolio. So, rather than 0 it basically asymptotically goes to 0.3 sigma square. So, with this I will end uh, the, the fourth lecture and continue the discussions in the fifth lecture more about investment analysis and portfolio management. Have a nice day and thank you very much. Thank you.